What's up everybody? So here we are yet again with some more stuff on my bench. Um, I'm going to be doing a few more tests with scope shots here. Um, something I wanted to do in the last video but uh, I didn't. So we're going to do it now. We're going to do a simple test and I want to show you guys something interesting about this test. Um, I've got a various selection of light bulbs, uh, their resistance values and their wattage values. And we're going to be checking RPM and uh, we have a 1 ohm resistor that we're checking for current here and we have a um, nether probe lead here that's just doing the voltage so we're checking the voltage on this coil and basically the current going through the entire circuit um, so the blue trace is the current the yellow trace is the voltage I just have here a peak to peak so we can kind of get a reference point the uh, peak to peak here is actually going to be our current but it's just a measurement in the voltage across that resistor uh, the yellow here is actually a, a, a true voltage reading, <clears throat> peak to peak. So let's do the test. I'm going to write down all of our input um, um, to our motor. Okay, we're using the power supply again. And uh, I'm going to be writing down the current draw on this measurement along with each one of our loads. Now what I want to show in this video is that uh, with a dead short, um, it seems to be free floating, almost as if uh, the coil saturated and the magnetic field um, has nowhere to go. Um, I'll give you a brief description at the end of this video, but let's, uh, let's run the test first. So I'll show you what happens when you have no load, uh, when you have a shorted load, and then when you have a resistive load of different various types. So I'm just going to set the camera here and I will uh, get it set up. We'll just keep grabbing the camera as we go. This will just be a one-time recording maybe. So, <clears throat> all right. No load, this is with no light bulb. All right. I'll write it down here. Here we're gonna do. Sixty. Um sixty thirty RPM at 0.26 amps. Okay. All right. So now what we're going to do, and the scope shows nothing because we're completely open here. Now what we're going to do <clears throat> is we're going to do a dead short condition through a one ohm load. All right. Short through one ohm. We're following 0.47 and 0.47. We're at 56.50 RPM. All right. Now, let me show you what the uh, current voltage looks like. Okay. So if I just connect, if I just connect uh, the load, you can see we have all of our voltage, which is about 240 volts peak to peak, and no current. When we are across the one ohm load, we basically have no voltage and all of our current. All right. So now we're going to basically drop in these bulbs and see what happens one at a time. So here's a 7.5 watt. Okay, and I'll do the measurements on the RPM and the current load later. Now we're going to do the 40 watt. All right. Now let's do the 60 watt. We will do the 90 watt. Get the voltage reading there. Oh, it's 
dirt okay. This is the 100 watt. Okay. Now I'm going to do all those tests again, but I'm going to do all the measurements. I'll just do them off camera. Um, and then I'll show you the results. So let's let's jump in and skip it ahead. Here we go. All right, I've completed the tests, and here is the official data. I need to get out of the light, maybe. So, our lower wattage is a higher resistance. The RPM is higher. The current is lower. The voltage is higher. The input current is lower. That is equal all the way across this board. So, as the resistance goes down, the RPM goes down. The current is pulling more. Okay, we're pulling more current. Again, that's voltage representing current. The voltage across the um, generating coils is going down, and the input current is going up to the little motor. Um, at a dead short, you basically have maximum current, minimum voltage, okay, um, and the input current is about 0.47 amps um, on the little motor, okay. So a dead short is slightly more amperage, all right, let me double check that. Okay, that's right. So at a dead short, we got 0.47 of an amp on the input. With a tiny load, we have a tiny bit less input. Um, but then again, we have no voltage at maximum current across the one ohm resistor. So um, my general theory on this, um, this is what I think is happening here, is if you were to take a fan or a pump or anything such as um, that's moving fluid, liquid, or air, it doesn't really matter. If you suffocate the pump, um, what happens, right? Okay, so you suffocate the pump and that thing just maximum speed um, and it just goes into infinity. As soon as you start adding a little load, it starts going and pulling more from the source and also putting out some actual, you know, production. So this is similar to that when you short out a fan, um, you're shorting out a load like this. That's that's kind of the equivalence there, um, is how I'm kind of describing it in my own head. You get a maximum RPM when you short out a fan like that. When you when you cut off the uh, um, the airflow and don't allow it to pump, it just sits there and free wheels inside of its own air. It hits a maximum RPM. Try it with a vacuum cleaner if you don't understand what I'm saying. Take a vacuum cleaner, cut it off. You'll hear it rev out. Uh, rev up real high. That's what that's what you're seeing. Oh, and I got to answer the phone now. Okay, so that's the end of this quick little test. Um, I just wanted to kind of run that through you, show you what I've done, um, give you a little bit of data, show you some scope shots of what's going on. Um, and that's it. So you guys make up your own decision. There's the data. Enjoy. Peace and love. Russ with RWGResearch.com and QuantumGravityResearch.org. All right, more to come. I'll be doing some more interesting tests. We'll see what we can come up with with what I have around the shop. All right, peace out.